Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, this beautiful woodland waterfall. I'll be painting it loosely with a limited palette but trying to keep that lovely spring light. Um, this photograph is from Pixabay. I shall try and leave a link to the photograph in the description below along with all the details as usual. The first thing that I'm going to do is look closely at the photograph and work out how best to simplify it and then map out with a pencil very rough, simple shapes and positions of the various features of the waterfall. I'm not going to get fussy with too much detail here. I just want to know where the rocks, the water um, and the undergrowth and trees in the background. And I'm not going to be copying this photograph it's going to be a loose painting it's going to be um, very much simplified but I'm hoping that I will be able to sort of capture the fresh feel of the water through negative painting um, in other words painting around the waterfall and leaving most of it as unpainted white paper I'm going to use a ruler to get my water line nice and straight um, I'm drawing around the tripod and the camera here and having to stretch my arms out at full length and it's quite difficult to draw a straight line so rulers are very, very helpful. I don't need too much here but just enough to guide me as I paint loosely. I'm going to use a limited palette today and and I'm going to use my tube paints, uh, mostly Cotman, but one Winsor & Newton artist quality. The Cotman paints are going to be lemon yellow, um, sepia and Payne's grey and my artist quality will be perylene green. It's a lovely dark green, it's very versatile and I think it'll be really useful here as the lights are very light but the darks are really dark where the undergrowth is very very thick. I think that will just about do for my drawing. So now I'm going to begin with um, a graduated wash over most of the page except for the waterfall, which I'm going to try and paint around. So I'm mixing up um, quite a watery mixture of my lemon yellow and using a size six or number six squirrel mop, I'm focusing on that very light top left corner, cutting around the top of the waterfall and the rocks. I'm going to bring that light color across most of the top and into the rocks and the watery area as well because there's a lot of reflected light in the picture so I want to have that light established in my underpainting. This is my perylene green, the same sort of mix, watery but reasonably well pigmented and I'm focusing this to bring around the lemon yellow just to add some slightly darker greens the lemon yellow, funnily enough, it looks it looks really yellow, but it's also quite an quite a sort of an acidic cold yellow. So it looks quite close to green in, in some ways, especially when it's next to other green colours. So I'm slowly working across my painting, putting in um, different amounts of this, these watery mixtures of the lemon yellow and the perylene green, building up this underpainting. This is a slightly stronger mixture of lemon yellow to really increase the light in that top corner. A 
as I say, I'm putting um, this yellow and green across all the rocky areas as well because there will be sort of reflected sunlight. And whatever I put down as an underpainting should show through in further layers. Now, finally, this is my Payne's Grey. And while all this paint is still wet, I'm going to drop in a few darks. They should just softly disperse and diffuse into the underpainting, but they should establish those slightly darker areas at the water's edge and on either side of the waterfall. That will help me, once the painting's dry, to be able to go in and to build up those layers. Now with a slightly richer mixture of Payne's Grey, I'm just going to establish some slightly darker darks. It will all dry back a lot lighter because I'm painting this sort of wet in wet and watercolour always dries back paler. But I'm hoping that this underpainting should give me a really useful base for the rest of the painting. This painting took about 40 minutes to paint, um, so I can't show all of it here in this edit, um, but I'm showing most of the important parts. Um, you should be able to paint along with this because the pieces that I've edited out are just where I'm repeating the same sort of techniques. So still establishing these darks, you can see already I'm beginning to get my waterfall shape popping out a bit more by painting around it. That's all unpainted paper for the waterfall. Softening up some edges with a tissue, just dabbing very lightly here and there. And I'm going to leave it all to dry completely. Now that it's dry, I can go in with the next layer and with a, a fairly well pigment, pigmented mixture of lemon yellow and my small harky brush, I'm going to get a lot more sunlit foliage suggested in that top corner. And then with a similar consistency mixture of the perylene green, I'm going to drop that in into the wet lemon yellow and it will diffuse and soften and colour blend on the page. And it should give me a good base for my trees when I come to put those in. I want to leave plenty of the lemon yellow. I also want to cut round across the top of my waterfall area. So this layer, I'm building up a sort of my mid-tones, I suppose, across the top and beginning to establish the slightly darker tones as I go towards the right-hand side of the painting and darker tones at the base of the trees where the waterfall starts and getting some shadows in there using the tips of the Harky brush and the Payne's Grey to establish the top of the waterfall and the rocks on either side. Begins that sort of slightly blocky brush stroke created by the tips of the Harky brush is beginning to establish the borders of the waterfall. I've painted this side in exactly the same way but putting in a bit more of the perylene green. Trying to still keep some nice light areas so that eventually I create the look of the sunlight coming through the trees in the distance. This is um, a plastic store card and I'm using the corner of that just to scrape in or etch in some tree shapes leaning in towards the centre area or towards where the waterfall is. If you lean your trees like this, they look quite realistic, but they will also help to lead the eye into the focal point, which is the waterfall. I'm 
starting to build up these banks on the right side of the river where the waterfall is flowing into the river. Just various mixtures of perylene green and lemon yellow. Painting quite loosely, I'm not actually painting anything in particular, I'm just trying to build up brush strokes that will suggest or imply the, um, the features in the landscape here. You can see that my perylene green gives me some lovely darks too. Now here on this left steeper bank, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to put in the lemon yellow and then the nice dark perylene green while the lemon yellow is still uh, wet so that it will diffuse a bit. But using really thick, almost tube consistency green there, I'm really building up those dark layers and beginning to bring the focus onto the waterfall. and then painting down around the rocks at the bottom, um, slowly building up the shapes. This is pure perylene green, straight across the bottom, leaving some dry brush, and then darkening it up with some Payne's Grey across the base. Just keeping the panes grey across the very bottom and along the right side of the water, keeping my brush stroke um, horizontal, and that should give me the flat, deep shadows underneath that tumbling water. This all needs to dry completely, and now I can go in and begin to work on the rocks and the darks. For this I'm going to mix up Payne's Grey and Sepia for the most part and I'm going to work on the rock first, this large rock at the base of the waterfall on the left. I want to keep a little bit of light on the top of the rock if possible but nice deep shadow around the base where it where it's coming out of the water and surrounded by the water. This is my three quarter inch flat brush. It's very useful for painting rocks. It gives me these nice um, sweeps. The brush strokes sort of sweep around in the, in the right kind of shape and I can keep the base of the rock nice and flat. They get some nice curves as well, dropping in slightly different different shades and different colours into the rock. And now that I've got the basic tones in my dark rock established, I'm going to bring up some Payne's Grey um, sort of rock suggestions of dark um, on this bank um, or rocky face where the water tumbles from. Just trying to follow the lay of the land and the shape of things, trying to get the brush strokes so that I get enough shadow in there but without covering up the green and the yellow entirely that I've got there. Working around where the water will be. The idea is to build up the darks eventually around um, the cascades of water so that they show through. The 
that water is already looking brighter and whiter with the, with the dark panes grey around it. I'll do the same on this bank on the right. Some nice darks across the base of that river bank. It helps that water, the gleaming water that's coming from that cascading waterfall to show up more strongly. Flat brush is a very useful tool for this kind of work. And now I'm going to establish those dark patches in, in between the two separate cascades of water using a small calligraphy brush and my Payne's Grey. Trying to be careful to keep these in the right sort of place, flat topped and tapering as they come down where the rocks are showing through and the water's cascading on either side. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper for this. It's a lovely 100% cotton paper and it really is wonderful for painting on. It stays wet for a, for a good long time and the watercolour effects are really lovely on it. Now I'm softening back here and there with my squirrel mop brush uh, to make sure that's nicely integrated but still nice and dark and then in for the second piece. I'm painting at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees um, so that gravity will help me to paint and help with the diffusion and the beautiful watercolour wet in wet effects. My paper is taped to my board um, and it will expand as I paint but then as it dries naturally um, it will flatten out completely. Now I'm softening back and I'm pulling some of some very pale, almost just paint water, Payne's Grey, here and there into the waterfall and that just gives it a tiny bit of dimension and shadow, maybe the implication or the suggestion of some rocks beneath the water that you can barely see. So I'm continuing to build up the darks around the waterfall, again with Payne's Grey coming across this side and then I will change to very dark perylene green and just pull that through the Payne's Grey and begin to um, suggest the, all the undergrowth, the bushes and the trees that are growing over and down across this um, right side of the waterfall banks. You can see in places how all, how dark the perylene green is. As I say, it's a lovely colour for these kinds of woodland scenes. If you need to soften back any of your edges with a tissue or a squirrel mop, just to give that kind of misty, hazy edge in some places where there's a little bit of water spray. Um, if you want to, you can use white gouache around the edges or in your waterfall if you don't manage to leave enough of the unpainted white paper. Just darkening up here and there, wherever I think it needs it. I've mixed up a nice dark mixture of Payne's Grey and Perylene Green and with the tips of the flat brush I'm carefully running it, dotting and dashing it sort of underneath um, that bubbling water line there and then I'm sweeping the brush backwards and forwards so that I get some disturbance and ripple marks and a bit of texture in the water but not too much. I just want enough, enough of these horizontal lines swept across um, to establish the look of water 
and move moving water below the cascade. Using my small calligraphy brush and a mixture of sepia and Payne's Grey for a nice really dark brown, I'm painting in my tree trunks across the top right bank. I'm going to put in quite a few trees. See, I'm tapering my brush strokes off as the branches get thinner and just flicking the brush off. So I get nice, fine twigs at the ends of the branches there. I'll put some leaf, leaf canopies over there, but um, I want it to establish the basic shapes of my trees. I'm taking my time doing this, so I'm not filming um, all of it or showing all of it here. leaning the trees in towards the waterfall. This can work really effectively to draw the eye towards your focal point. As this is a, a woodland scene and a wild wood, I'm trying to keep my trees slightly different. I, will, I don't want them to look regimented and exactly the same as if somebody has planted them there. I want them to just look as if they're growing naturally as as you know they're growing wherever the seed has fallen and flourished and as i paint my trees i'll bed them in using perylene green and a bit of Payne's gray and the tips of the small pro art ron ranson harky brush just to create a suggestion of the ground from which they're growing and then again to go in and use the tips and the corner of the brush to paint foliage over the branches leaving some of the branches showing just creating that dense canopy of leaves sort of late spring early summer trees I'm going to bring these trees right across this bank, painting them in exactly the same way, but this batch of trees, I'm using the rigger to show you that you can use either or, depends, um, or any brush really that you're comfortable with that will give you a fairly fine line. Again, that nice dark, rich paint to bed them in using the sort of horizontal stepped brush strokes, which sort of brings up the shape of a bank. I'm really going to lean these trees in on this left side. These ones will show up beautifully, sort of backlit by the light that's coming in and shining into that uh, woodland waterfall area. I'm painting them in exactly the same way, this time again with the rigger brush. So I'm, I'm taking the pressure off my brush stroke as I get towards the finer branches. And then once I've got enough trees in that area, I will go in again with the small harky brush and use the corners of that to paint over the leaf canopies. Making sure that I still leave plenty of that lovely yellow glow. It's the finishing touches now really, so getting in some really nice strong darks around the waterfall just to get that to show even more. I'm trying to be careful here just want to use just enough of these really dark darks to um, develop the darkest um, value contrast, I suppose, between the, the white unpainted paper of the waterfall and the rocks in shadow. I'm 
This is a slightly smaller flat brush so that I can make sure I, I get nicely into the small areas that I want to create these, these, these deeper shadows. I think it's a half inch size. I just need some darker tone around this cascade on the left. And I think that's um, just about finished now. I think I could add a bit more detail, but I think I'm going to leave it at that um, and remove the tape and see how it looks with a nice clean white border. And here's the finished painting. And I think it looks okay. I'm quite pleased with um, using the negative painting method for the waterfall at how well um, that white water really shows up against the darker rocks and the sunlight um, behind the trees that's kind of um, suffusing the entire picture with with a gentle glow well thanks so much for watching and um, i hope that was a useful demonstration um, i shall list all my materials etc in the description uh, below for your information. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon then. Bye.